All About Lily Shushu is this Japanese coming-of-age film that takes place during this gray age where teenagers don't know where their lives will end up while they struggle through challenging time. It has beautiful cinematography, a unique way of editing, and this amazing soundtrack that ties into the plot. But who is Lily Shushu? She's this artist in the movie that we don't ever see but we know of their existence. There's this online chat where fans talk about Lily, and we get snippets of that chat throughout the whole movie. From that group chat, we get to see that there's almost a, a parasocial relationship between Lily and the fans. The four main characters are Yuichi, Hoshino, Suda, and Kuno. And the four main characters in the movie have a unique connection to Lily. As soon as the movie starts, we get to see this group chat, and we see messages from a variety of people online and in the movie we find out that the main character Yuichi is called Philia and later in the movie spoiler alert we learn that Hashino is Blue Cat those are the two main people that speak in the chat the movie starts off with an introduction to all the friend groups we get a lot of scenes of them in class and see how they interact the movie does a good job getting you invested with these characters as the movie progresses you really get to feel how the characters feel and the movie does a good job showing these friendships in a realistic way Throughout the movie, you get to learn all of their stories extensively without it being disorientating, without making each story feel disconnected from the main plot. The relationships in the friend groups are shown very accurately. An example of this is the three girls ganging up on Hoshino and Yuichi after class. In the scene, we can see that they interact with each other in a realistic way. They take turns insulting Hoshino, and the girls keep looking at each other for approval. In both scenes, we see believable interactions between the friend groups that allows you to sympathize with the characters and let them grow on you. From the beginning of the movie, you have a good understanding of all the characters and their dynamics within the friend groups. Eventually, the main friend group with Yuichi and Hoshino go to a trip to Okinawa with stolen money. Right away, there's a change in the camera that's used in the movie to show how it's all in their memory and the use of a vintage camera gives it that nostalgic feeling of the past. Also, the unstabilized nature of the camera gives you this sense of anxiety and making the tone of the movie now uneasy. The camera's a lot less stabilized because it's in the hands of the kids. They're all alone on this trip. It's their responsibility to be in charge of themselves. Adding to that idea that they have to be in charge of themselves in this foreign location. They follow a tour guide and have a lot of fun on the island until one night where Hoshino gets really hurt by a, by a flying fish, which could have been a fatal accident. Later on, there's these two scenes where we see Hoshino and Yuichi swimming in the water. There's a contrast between Yuichi and Hoshino swimming because Yuichi's is a lot calmer. He floats at the top of the water effortlessly. On the contrary, when Hoshino goes out to the water, we get this really uncomfortable scene where he is drowning. Eventually, he gets saved by one of the tour guides. Those two scenes are a good indicator of each of those characters' state of minds for the rest of the movie. Hoshino's is a lot more disruptive, while Yuichi's is a lot more reserved and calm. There's this man on the trip that kept randomly popping up out of nowhere and interacted with the group. We see him hitch a ride and get food from the group. In all of his scenes, we get this feeling of unease from him until eventually on the kid's way back to where they're staying, they all witness that man kill himself in front of a truck. After experiencing all these things, the tone of the trip is a lot more serious as opposed at the beginning of the trip when they were all having fun. Eventually, we get a scene of the crew all on a boat and Hoshino decides to throw the money out into the ocean, marking the end of that trip. That trip was truly life-changing for all of the characters involved. Now that school begins, we see a complete character change in Hoshino. He's a lot more brutal and violent after the trip. As much as we grow to hate Hoshino throughout the movie, we understand where he's coming from. He has two near-death experiences, experience someone else dying, his parents get divorced, and his parents' business shuts down. All of those things would definitely fuck up a child. And in the first scene back, we see that snap in Hoshino. And then right after, it cuts to this scene with this strange color grading on it now. In the scene, we see to what extent Hoshino has changed. And with the new color grading, it's like we're in a brand new world. The main thing Hoshino does now is that he takes away things that makes others happy, the way things were taken away from him. He harms and controls people for his own satisfaction now. We see this primarily in two characters, in Suda and Kuno. Later in the movie, Hoshino sends out his goons to sexually assault Kuno. In this incredibly dark scene, we get to see Yuichi show strong emotions for the first time in the movie. We see him in agony as he cries watching Kuno get attacked, and it shows us how much he really cares about Kuno. And after that, in the gut-wrenching scene where Kuno comes back to class, there's this incredibly dark tone to the movie now. The room is lit in this blue light, and the score becomes a lot more dramatic, emphasizing how Kuno's character was destroyed. Next up, we learn that Suda has been selling her body to older men for Hoshino's monetary gain. Yuichi is tasked to follow her around to make sure she gets her job done. 
And somewhere along the line, Yuichi shares Lily's music to Suda, and we see a bit of change in Suda's character now. In this scene, there are airplanes and kites flying in the sky. The kites have strings attached to them, and the airplane has a cam trail following it. All these things have a string attached to them. We also get a glimpse of the chat where someone is saying, I'm flying over and over again. Suda gets this childlike wonder and asks if she can fly the kites too. She expresses how she wants to fly like a kite too. Then it cuts to a scene of Suda's lifeless body on the ground after she jumped off a tower, with the camera moving down, mimicking her fall. The town has a memorial and there's a bouquet of flowers on Suda's desk, back in class. This really affects Yuichi because in class we see him in an overexposed light, symbolizing how he feels sick, until eventually he throws up and gets sent to the nurse's office. By now in the movie you notice that there's a contrast between how much Yuichi talked at the beginning of the movie and to how much he talks now. At the beginning he was very vocal with his friends, especially in the scene where they're eating ramen in the restaurant but now we barely see him speak. In the nurse's office, he talks to the teacher about how he feels like there's a strange noise in his head. The noise in his head could mean a lot of things. It could be his overwhelming feelings, his angst, but I think it's his inability to speak out on how he truly feels. In the group chat, we discover that Yuichi has become suicidal, and when he expresses those feelings on the board, someone called Blue Cat in the chat saves him. Then later in the movie, we discover that Blue Cat is actually Hashino. At the end of the movie, we get excited for Yuichi because he finally gets to go to the Lily concert. This seems like the first good thing that's happened to him in a long time. We have this good feeling inside us until we discover that Hashino has also gone to the concert. And once again, Hashino takes away that happiness from another character by taking Yuichi's ticket and just throwing it away. At this point, Yuichi also discovers that Hashino has been Blue Cat, the person that saved him from killing himself. Yuichi waits outside until the concert is done by watching this big screen. And once the concert's over, the crowd of people come out and Yuichi sees Hashino in the pack. Hashino walks by with no remorse of what he did. Once again, we see Yuichi show strong emotions when it's something that truly matters to him. He knows he has to get back at Hashino. He calls out that Lily is out there, causing the crowd of people to all stampede backwards. And that's when Yuichi gets behind Hashino and stabs him to death. And in all the chaos, Yuichi can get away. Later on now, back in class, he's talking with the same teacher from before, and the teacher asks him if he can hear that strange noise anymore. But he says that noise is gone. That noise disappears once he gets his life back on track. And the movie ends in this beautifully sunlit room with Kuno playing the piano and Yuichi listening along. Like I said, the movie has a unique style of editing that adds a lot to the ideas and themes of the movie. Here are some examples. Throughout the movie, there's a lot of beautiful scenes with no dialogue and just music, which at many points makes the movie seem like a music video. The volumetric lighting gives all the scenes this dreamy feeling. Another thing that adds that dreamy feeling is the camera's fluid movement. The scene where Kuno is playing piano and it cuts to Ichi in the fields listening to Lily. It shows that parallelism between them. At the beginning of a lot of scenes, the camera pans from another location to the main shot, reminding us that we're part of this bigger world in the scene, and it's also a clever way to show details about characters. Like when we see the boys pissing over the bridge, it shows us that they are careless, and also when we see the gang of girls behind school to show the same idea. At the beginning of the movie, you have Yuichi in the field listening to his music, and as the scene ends, the shot gets closer, excluding the field from the frame. The field commonly used to show when the characters are at a peace of mind. So when we don't see the field, it means Yuichi isn't going to be at that peace of mind anymore. And that idea is reinforced with how the music fades away, then it cuts to the train shot with no music at all, beginning the movie. The movie soundtrack isn't just background music, it's actually important to the plot. Usually the soundtrack of a movie is used to fill an auditory void or to enhance emotions in the scenes, but this movie does so much more with it. All the characters of the movie use music to escape. The most important song in the movie is called Arabesque. It puts you in this pensive and introspective mood that's a perfect song to zone out and just think about life. Arabesque also has this never-ending dreamy feeling to it, which is a common style used throughout the movie. And two interesting things about the song is that Arabesque is sung in an Okinawa dialect, which is where the kids go on vacation. And Kuno's favorite art piece is by composer The Bussies, Arabesque number one. The song that plays when Suda is with the kites is also really important. The name of the song is which means wings that cannot fly. And the song talks about how you're tied down to something and how you want to break free from it, which is a theme present in all the characters. Yuichi is submissively chained down to Hashino. Hashino is trapped in his own head from rage and trauma. Kuno's ability to be a normal kid is stripped away from her by bullies. And Suda's is a lot more obvious. She literally wants to fly away from her life. Next up, the themes of the movie. First one I think is a minor theme. It's about how money negatively affects us. Right away, the movie starts off with a guy stealing money from an old man and then stealing CDs from a store to resell for money. Eventually, Yuichi gets in trouble for stealing a CD. Next, they all have a life-changing experience because of the money they stole. 
on their trip to Okinawa. Hoshino even figures out that the money is the root of their problems, so he decides to throw out the money into the ocean. And when Suda realizes she can get money from the prostitution, she doesn't really see how it's a bad thing anymore. And now for the bigger theme of the movie, what is the ether? To me, the ether is this idea of escapism. All the characters find a peace of mind listening to Lily's music. And they say that the ether is associated with Lily's music. Throughout the movie, we see Yuichi listening to Lily's music a lot. And whenever he does, he's in a very peaceful state of mind. As opposed to how dark his life is. When Suda gets introduced to Lily's music, it's like her view on the world has changed. She can finally realize how unhappy she is as she falls in love with the music. And surprisingly, Hoshino finds that escapism through the music too. We see him finally releasing a bunch of emotions when he's listening to the music out on the field. And also we see this on how passionate he is in the chat rooms, to the point where he saves Yuichi's life unknowingly, while still being a dick to him in real life. And another small detail that reinforces this idea that the ether is a is another word for escapism, is that at the concert, when the two people were fighting, people were yelling out, you're ruining the ether. Meaning, you break the peace, you ruin the ether. Now I don't usually like long movies, but this one kept me engaged throughout the entire thing. I think giving me more time to understand the characters allowed me to understand all their motivations more, which got me more invested. And also the idea of how it jump cuts to the chat room kept me engaged throughout the entire movie. The structure of the film is a bit disorientating, reinforcing that dreamy feeling, but I think ultimately it does a good job bringing both plot lines together at once. The juxtaposition between the beautiful classical music playing and the disturbing scenes throughout the movie is a really interesting thing to do. A thing the movie does really well is expectation subversion. You never really know where it's gonna go. An example of this is that one random guy in the movie on the trip at Okinawa. As I watched the movie for the first time, I thought he was gonna be bad news. But he ends up dying and changing everyone's perspective in life. Another thing the movie does a good job of is expressing the idea of ambiguity. It keeps you engaged and desiring answers to questions you might ask yourself throughout the movie. Questions like who's Philia and who's Blue Cat in the chat rooms, or if Yuichi and Kuno get together by the end of the movie. Cause yeah, after two and a half hours, I still wanted to see more. It was such a good movie. I could only describe it as hauntingly beautiful, subliminally clever, dynamically enchanting, but more than anything else, ethereal.